In this video, we're going to discuss domain and range. Domain is all possible inputs or x values that can be in this graph, while range is all outputs, y values. So in order to do this, you have to find your graph and see within what limits does that graph exist, if it's limited at all. There are two ways to notate. It can be done in interval notation using inequalities or what we call set notation with brackets and parentheses. More notes on this are available on Google Classroom. For continuous, you might see negative infinity or infinity or you might see clear starting and ending points on a graph. However, for discrete, you will just list the independent X and Y values. So let's look at these examples below. For my domain, I took my pink pen and I dragged it across the X axis. And I see that my graph starts at negative three with an open circle. Therefore, the graph is not equal to negative three or in set notation, we'll have a parenthesis. As I continue to move, I continue to touch the graph. This graph is continuous. And it stops at 1 with a closed circle. I just try to draw it to the side. And therefore, I have a bracket. Hard stop. The graph exists at 1. x equals 1. I then needed to do range. For range, we are going to rise up the graph from bottom to top. Rise up. And the first time I touch the graph is at negative four, where I see there are two closed circles. So I know the graph is equal to negative four, or has y values equal to negative four, and would be a closed bracket. As I continue it up, it ends at y equals zero. Even though there's an open circle here, there's a closed dot where that graph touches, which means that at some point we have confirmedly touched zero. Therefore, we are equal to zero. As previously stated for discrete graphs, we use these curly brackets to say that these are the set of values that exist and curly brackets for range that these are the sets of values that exist. More often, your graphs will be continuous. However, discrete does come up in several real world situations. We will work on those more throughout the year. So here are a few examples. These notes are available on Google Classroom, discrete, I just listed the individual values where points could be located. And here, for domain, I took my pencil and dragged it along the x values, along the x-axis. And it started at zero. So I know that we started at zero. However, when I end the graph, I find these two arrows. I tend to circle the arrows and note that that's infinity. It's going on forever. It's going to keep going towards the positive x values. So x is greater than zero. Any x values greater than zero is where this graph exists or from zero to infinity. Those say the exact same thing. For my range, I started at the bottom and I hit an arrow. And I circled it because it's not a defined point. I circled it and said, okay, I came from negative infinity. These negative forever y values. And I continued up and I hit the forever y values. So these are a lot of ways of writing it. Here's interval notation. Negative infinity is less than or equal to y, y values, less than or equal to infinity. 
or in set notation, we can say negative infinity to infinity. I personally find it easier to say the fancy are all real numbers. And then other two examples, again, arrow to arrow, going across, dragging across the x-axis, arrow to arrow. You need to look at the end behavior of the graph. These points don't mean anything right now, not for domain or range, just arrow to arrow. And this graph is a great example for you to check out where we have closed dots and open dots. And it's important to note that this is continuous. A line is drawn. There are infinitely many points on that line. Therefore, this is continuous.